Good evening and welcome to our time of night prayer. I'm Terence Russell. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. We will now have a period of silence to reflect on the past day and bring before the Lord anything for which we need to ask his forgiveness. We say together, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have wandered and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things that we ought to have done, and we have done those things that we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But you, O Lord, have mercy on us sinners. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who are penitent. According to your promises, declare to mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O merciful Father, for his sake, that we may have a disciplined, righteous and godly life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And hear these words of God's forgiveness. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And our psalm this evening is taken from Psalm 84, verses 10 to 12. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and bridle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. And our New Testament reading this evening is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 17 to 31. Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 to 31. The rich young man. And as he was setting out on his journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honour your father and mother. And he said to him, Teacher, all these I have kept from my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him. And said to him, You lack one thing. Go, sell all that you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come follow me. And disheartened by the saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How difficult it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were amazed at his words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how difficult it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. And they were exceedingly astonished and said to him, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, with God 
all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, See, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mothers or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. Well, this story teaches us a great thing about sincerity. You can be sincere, but also sincerely wrong. The rich man was on a sincere spiritual quest, searching for the key to eternal life. He sincerely asked Jesus what he must do to inherit eternal life. He sincerely tries to live an upright life, keeping God's commandments, and sincerely thought he was good but he was also sincerely wrong. Why? Well, firstly, he had a mistaken commercial view of the Christian life. He thought that salvation and eternal life were earned rather than given to us through repentance and grace. He misunderstood the nature of goodness and had a naive view of himself. Sure, he kept some of the commandments, but his heart was all wrong. When it came to the crunch, it was his love of the things of this world that counted, not his love for God or his neighbour. Are we ever sincerely wrong about ourselves? Sincerity is a great thing, but it must be married to truth. As the rich man found, the route to God's blessings and eternal life is not through ticking off the commandments we keep and ignoring those we don't, but by making Jesus Lord of our lives, repenting and following him and serving him. We continue with our responses. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wing. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Well, we now enter a time of silence, where we offer up our intercessions and thanksgivings to the Lord. And we bring our prayers together as we pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with our collect. Almighty God, by triumphing over the powers of darkness, Christ has prepared a place for us in the new Jerusalem. May we, who have this day given thanks for his resurrection, praise him in the eternal city of which he is the light. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we bring our night prayer to a close with these words. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly on us and give us his peace. Amen.